Hey everyone, my name is Alma. My name is Anaga. Welcome back to our sixth website development lesson, HTML tables and more JavaScript. So here's our lesson plan for today. We will start off by learning about HTML tables and reviewing the JavaScript topics that we learned last lesson. We will then do a walkthrough of a short JavaScript project relating to HTML tables. Finally, we will go over the homework assignment. Let's start with HTML tables. To create a table, use the table tag. Inside the table, you can create table headers using the th tag, table rows using the tr tag, or table data using the td tag. Table headers are either the top row or first column of a table that classifies the type of information you will find in each column. We can use the scope keyword to define the table headers as rows or columns. The tr tag is used to add rows to the table, while the td tag will insert data into the individual cells. If you want a certain table data to span the rows or columns, use the call span or row span attributes. We can also split the table up into three sections using the t-head, t-body, and t-foot tags. These tags are short for header, body, and footer. So now we'll go over a brief review of our last lesson. JavaScript output defines how the HTML output is displayed. Document.write basically writes the output down onto the website. Window.alert writes the output onto an alert box that pops out on your screen. For JavaScript comment syntax, two slashes make a single line comment and a comment in between a slash and a star lets you write blocks of comments. Primitive data types are predefined data types that are the base of created data types. For example, integers, floats, strings, booleans, nulls, and bigins are all primitive data types. For declaring and initializing variables, you use the keywords var, let, and const. Now, let's practice using JavaScript. Open your Replit account and create a new HTML JavaScript CSS project. Title this project Website Development Lesson 6. We'll now do a short program walkthrough on HTML tables and JavaScript basics. Let's do a walkthrough of creating a school schedule. We will use what we have learned over the past two lessons for this project. Inside the body tag, create a center tag. We will write all of our code in between these center tags to make sure our school schedule is centered. Next, create a heading titled My School Schedule using the H1 tag. Then, create a table element underneath the heading. Then, create a script tag. We will write all of our code in between these script tags. When we run the program, you should see a header titled My School Scheduled in the center of your web page. Now, let's go into our CSS file to style our table. Type in table comma th comma td to style the table, table headers, and table data. Inside, style the borders, font family, and padding to whatever you would like. We are making the border one pixel in solid black, the font family Helvetica, and the padding seven pixels. Now let's start adding information into the table. Start by creating a t-head tag where all of our header information will go. Underneath the t-head tag, type in the th tag. Inside the opening tag, type in scope equals quotation marks call to ensure that our table headers are classifying the columns. Create two table headers titled time and class title. When we run the program, we should see a small table under My School Schedule that has the time and class name in separate boxes. Create a T body tag where most of our school schedule information will go. Inside the table body, create a new table row using the TR tag. Then create a TD tag and label it as regular school day. Inside the opening TD tag, type in call span equals quotation marks two. When we run the program, you should see regular school day spanning both columns underneath the table headings. After the closing TR tag, make another TR tag, but this time it will be for the time and class name. 
Under the TR tag, make another TD tag and label it 9 o'clock a.m. Then make another TD tag and label it a class name, for example, science. When we run the program, you should see one new row including the class time and class name. You can repeat this process as many times as you would like with however many classes and times you would like to have in your school day. To finish off our table, let's add some information to our footer. Create the T-foot tag and inside, add a table row. Next, use the TD tag to fill in the cells with a total label and the amount of classes on your schedule. When we run the program, you should see the table footer show up at the bottom of your table. Now let's start using JavaScript. In the script tags that we made earlier, use two slashes to make a comment. This comment will state how many classes you want to have at school. For example, we wrote slash slash you have seven classes at school. In the next line, create a new variable called total classes. Write var total classes equals five. Make sure to use a semicolon at the end because JavaScript syntax makes you use semicolons, unlike HTML. In the next line, make another comment stating that if the variable school day is true, this means that you will have school today. Create a new variable called school day and make it a Boolean value of true. You would write var school day equals true semicolon. Now let's create a conditional to tell our code what to display. We can do this through using the if conditional. If the school day is true, let's display a window alert letting the user know that school is starting soon. Underneath, using the document.write and using the total classes variable that we created earlier, let the user know how many classes there are on the school schedule. When we run the program, we should first receive the window alert, and then we should see underneath the table the amount of classes in our school schedule. Similarly, create an if conditional if school day is false with appropriate print statement. See what happens when the school day is false. When we run the program, we can see that JavaScript has sent us different statements letting us know that there is no school. And that's it for today's lesson. This month's homework is to begin planning out your final project. Make sure to use all of your knowledge from the past six lessons and incorporate it into your final project. Your project needs to have a theme, for example, environmental sustainability, politics, etc. Your website should have at least five different web pages, including information about different aspects of your theme. For example, if your website is about environmental sustainability, you can have web pages about historical issues, today's problems, how to solve these problems, statistics, and famous figures trying to combat environmental sustainability. Thank you so much for listening to our fifth website development lesson. Feel free to contact Inago or me with any questions regarding today's lesson. Also, feel free to send us a brainstorm of your final project. Next class, we'll review all the concepts we have learned this far. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.